Hey guys. I have a secret. Have you ever wondered if your nipples are supposed to be flat, short, or inverted? And if they are, how are you going to breastfeed? I've wondered that my whole life. And honestly, until I got into the lactation field as a lactation consultant, I did not realize how common not having perfect everted perky nipples is and how common having flatter, shorter, or inverted nipples truly is. Trust me on this one, guys. I've seen a lot of nipples working in lactation and I was so happily surprised with this finding because it meant my nipples weren't weird. TMI. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about the tools, techniques, and tricks that exist to help all of you out there who are facing what we will call these tricky nipples. So inverted or flat nipples can be really tricky just because the a newborn suck reflex is located on the roof of their mouth. If you put any sort of nipple in a newborn's mouth or even if you let them suck on your pinky, they have a reflex to start sucking. But when the nipple is a little bit short, flat or inverted, the baby may get a big, deep, beautiful latch and just not feel that nipple tickle the roof of the mouth and know to initiate sucking. And sometimes this is an issue and sometimes some babies just don't care. They will get on the breast and they will do their thing. So I don't want you to think that just because you don't have everted long nipples that your baby won't be able to breastfeed. However, if you do have a baby who does seem challenged in the beginning from the shorter nipple or not initiating that suck reflex, then there are tools that we can use in the beginning to help the baby figure out feeding at the breast or chest. And this doesn't mean that you're gonna have to use those tools for your entire breastfeeding journey. So, a lot of times you may need to start out using a nipple shield in the beginning. The goal is to use a nipple shield for, I don't know, maybe up to two weeks and then wean off the shield. If a nipple shield is introduced at the beginning of breastfeeding, so this is what a nipple shield looks like. And if you want more information on nipple shield use, we do have a video all about nipple shield use here. Feel free to check it out after this video. Um, but if this is introduced in the hospital, the reason is is because it can help extend a shorter nipple. So this would be considered a pretty short nipple even though it is everted. Um, and this would be extending that shorter nipple so that when the baby latches, it hits the roof of their mouth and they know to start sucking. You can always practice latching with and without the shield. I usually recommend to start practicing without it and if your baby starts to get frustrated, go ahead, put the nipple shield back on, do the feed, and try again next time. You may be doing a little bit of pumping if you're using a nipple shield because a shield does act as a barrier between you and your baby, so you are getting just a little bit less stimulation and pumping a couple times a day is going to help bring up that stimulation and protect your milk supply. If after a couple of weeks of using a shield, you're having trouble getting your baby to wean off it, definitely reach out to a lactation consultant in your community and work with them because we do have some tricks up our sleeves for encouraging babies to come off of the nipple shield. But also as babies' mouths grow and they accommodate more breast tissue in their mouth and they just become more effective at sucking 
and they feel more of the milk let down, which they might not be feeling in the early days in the hospital when you're still having colostrum. Um, as babies grow, they just become more efficient at breastfeeding and you may no longer need to use a nipple shield despite having very flat or inverted nipples. Another tool that exists for pulling out or helping to avert a nipple um, are supple cups. So supple cups are little tiny silicone cups. Uh, let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go. So that's what a supple cup looks like. And a supple cup works by just squeezing, placing it over the nipple and releasing. And on a real breast, it's going to stay on and extend the nipple up into this. So you can wear these around for 15 to 20 minutes a couple times a day and see if they help to extend the nipple. Um, you can do this in pregnancy, but I would recommend doing it towards the end of pregnancy because any stimulation of the nipple in pregnancy can cause contractions of the uterus. So make sure if you're thinking about using anything like pumping or supple cups to help evert the nipple, that you check in with your OB to make sure that you're at a safe place in your pregnancy to do so. Well, I just kind of gave it away, but another thing that you can try to help avert the nipple prior to latching your baby is to use a hand pump or an electric breast pump to avert the nipple with a little bit of suction. So you can use that for a couple of minutes before trying to latch baby. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the nipple will just pop right back in as soon as the suction is released. So work with your lactation consultant um, and your nurses at the hospital to problem solve. There's another device that exists. I don't have one here, but I can link to it down below called a latch assist. Um, a latch assist is kind of like the same shape as a supple cup, but it has a little suction bulb on the end and you just kind of squeeze that bulb and it pulls the nipple up into the little bell shape. Every once in a while, I find that the latch assist can be helpful, but I don't find it that much more extremely useful than just using a hand pump or I really find that the supple cups um, work even better. So if you're kind of wondering if you should invest in that, I would say your best bet is to invest in a hand pump if you aren't given one at the hospital because it's very versatile and you can use it down the road for more than just diverting the nipple. Um, what else was I gonna tell you guys about? Supple cups, nipple shield, pumping, teacup hold, teacup hold. <laughs> okay, so this sounds kind of funny, but when we do have a short or inverted nipple, a lot of times you can just support your breast or chest tissue in a way that helps extend the nipple by a simple technique called a teacup hold. So with a teacup hold, you just take your two little fingers, like you don't wanna pinch above and below the nipple because you're gonna block the area that you want your baby's mouth to come up and over. But if you slide your finger kind of over here to the side of the areola and give it a little pinch like that and pull back, it can help extend the nipple out a little bit and create a little bit of a ridge for baby to come up and over when you are attempting a latch. So if you're having trouble figuring that out, um, just mention to your lactation team that you heard that teacup hold could be useful for sh shorter or inverted nipples and see if they can help support you through figuring out where the best placement is for your fingers. Another thing that people have um, talked about doing in the past is to wear breast shells to help extend the nipple. The breast shell is worn under your bra. There are breast shells that are for holding a bra off of a sore nipple and breast shells that are 
actually meant to put kind of reverse pressure around the nipple to help pop the nipple out and by wearing these over an extended period in your bra people thought that it helps extend the nipple. I don't find this technique to be that useful for helping to get a nipple to revert. I definitely would recommend using a hand pump or the supple cups. So in summary, I know guys this is kind of a sensitive topic, but your nipples aren't weird. There are a lot of flat, inverted, and short nipples out there. Trust me, just because your nipples are shorter or inverted does not mean that your baby won't be able to latch to them. Even if they have a hard time in the beginning, there are tools to get you through that challenging period. Even if you have a hard time in the beginning, it doesn't mean that as your baby grows, they aren't going to learn to better accommodate your nipple and learn to effectively breastfeed without any of these tools that we talked about. Comment down below if you feel comfortable sharing your story of how you ended up breastfeeding or how your breastfeeding journey went if you have flat or inverted nipples or if a friend of yours had this. If you want to comment on their behalf, um, also feel free to share the story or I would love to offer words of encouragement to any parents who are kind of struggling with this issue or are still pregnant but worried that this is going to affect their breastfeeding journey. So please share down below um, how you overcame any challenges that you faced during your breastfeeding journey due to flat or inverted nipples. So happy that you guys are here on this channel. If you found this information helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you hit the bell, you're gonna be notified each week when we post a new video. Thank you so much for joining us and feel free to check out some of our other videos here on other various topics in breast and chest feeding. Thank you.